everything you need to know about the all-new Mercedes GLB today on our full driving review here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. And today also a special feature on the GLB 35 AMG, the so far top sports version of this car. But no matter in which engine version you are interested, we will give you all the details on exterior, interior and the driving. Please enjoy together with us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Special thing with the GLB in the front design, it has a very strong stance on the road and rather an off-road look, maybe carried over from the former GLK, whereas other SUVs at Mercedes also have rather, you know, a sportier look and so on. But this one here, strong off-road stance, I somehow liked it. Do you as well? Headlamps come usually for GLB with halogen standard, then optional LED, optional optional multi-beam LED also with high beam function. And then there are different front grills available. There's a standard one, then there's an AMG line with a diamond pin grill. That would be the one I prefer visually, so, you know, you, but that's also a matter of preference. And then the true AMG model, the GLB 35, this one here, has those vertical fins in the front grille to make it even more aggressive together with stronger spoilers right there. 4 meters 63, 15 foot 2 or 182 inches is the length of the Mercedes GLB and yes everyone was expecting a shorter model that really literally sits between GLA and GLC but this one here basically has the same length than the Mercedes GLC so interesting as for the market position, but you see, the front hood is way shorter because this one here is the compact class platform by Mercedes. In this case, with the longer wheelbase that is, for example, used for the A-Class sedan in China. The A-Class sedan that we get in the US and Europe has the short wheelbase and is not the same wheelbase as this one here. But very interesting decision, definitely. So you might ask, yeah, what it's for? Yeah, if you have a shorter hood, and no six cylinders and so on, then you have more space on the interior and that's what it's also for. So not too long on the exterior, but a lot of space on the interior. Of course, we will find out more about that today. Then you can see here crossover wheel arches, even for the AMG model. The AMG comes with 19 to maximum and we see those here, 21 inch wheels. 21 inch for such a car is pretty massive, definitely. Yeah, if you want a little bit more comfort, then you would stick with a little bit smaller wheels. You already saw it here with the keyless entry, then also you can have this function that the mirror flip in and out automatically. And the rest of the side profile, really upright, all the windows, roof rails, just a design line right here. It reminds us of the Mercedes GLS. It's like a small GLS. And of course, yeah, at least half the price, if not less. <laughs> yeah, price was also between GLA and GLC, by the way, even if the length is not really between it. So very interesting as for this approach. I mean, I've seen maybe more beautiful cars from the side profile, but you have to think about this one has rather the emphasis that you have a lot of space on the interior. And I think that's also then a good decision to make it all upright design-wise here. Also some stronger lower bumper here for the AMG model and you can see it sits a little bit lower. Suspension wise it's also interesting. A normal GLB starts with a standard suspension, a fixed one. Option you can get an adaptive suspension which also then varies depending on the driving mode you pick. And the same goes also for the AMG. 
start with a normal stiff suspension, a fixed one, and then optional, the adaptive one, but both with an AMG shape, so both then on a stiffer level than the other ones. Also, the rear is pretty much upright, then the tail lamps with a modern LED signature. Then we've got some contrasts here in the AMG model, also with the diffuser style. Those outer tips here are for beauty. The real exhaust is on the inside. And if you pick this AMG Night package, then you also have black exhausts and also black side mirrors. Also showing you that one here. And talking about the colors also, this one is mountain gray. We also know the color because it's available in mountain gray Magno at some cars at Mercedes. That's this beautiful gray matte. But this one here, the you know, not the matte tone, so just mountain gray. And we also have the same car, the GLB 35 AMG for you in Patagonia Red. Do you prefer this one? Tell me in the comments. And there's also Patagonia Red for the AMG line that you can see a difference how that looks like then, again with this diamond pin grill. And my favorite one for today would be the one in Galaxy Blue, here a Galaxy Blue AMG line. The screaming out blue color, we also call it Thomas Blue here in Autogefühl. So, design-wise, which one do you prefer? An AMG line or the true AMG? What's under the hood? Yay, hydraulic struts. Love that. <laughs> but I mean, for that price, I think we can also expect it, especially for the AMG. So this one here, a two liter four cylinder turbo petrol engine, 306 horsepower, 5.2 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. There's also a launch control available. You've seen it in the intro and also later on again in the driving part. So pretty powerful, definitely. And the same engine that also is built in the A35, for example. All-wheel drive distribution. This one is a front-wheel driven platform. So it's front plus rear on demand. Maximum of 50-50 distribution. And in general for a GLB, so the AMG always is set on a sportier all-wheel drive trim. But also for normal GLB, they thought about that they couple it with the driving modes for example 80% front 20% rear in the normal then when you go to sports mode it's 70 30 and in the off-road mode it's rather 50 50 so it depends on the driving mode you pick and also on the situation what the vehicle is actually detecting how much slip there is and so on and there are also other engines available for example my tip would be to go for the glb 250 that one is let's say the best price performance petrol engine because you have a two liter four cylinder petrol engine so the same base engine then with 224 horsepower also the eight speed dual clutch transmission that one is not the true amg version of course but you will pay really less money and still have a Mercedes engine. Even smaller petrol, the GLB 200, a 1.33 liter with 163 horsepower. That one then is the Renault engine. And probably if you want to go for the Mercedes, you also want to have the Mercedes engine, I think. And then there are diesels, the GLB 220D, two liter four cylinder, all diesels, 190 horsepower with all-wheel drive. The GLB 200D, then with 150 horsepower, possible all-wheel drive, and the GLB 180, so 116 horsepower. So that means all-wheel drive only available for the two stronger diesels. The strongest one is always coming with that. And then here for the A35. So if you go for the, two, two, uh, for the GLB 250, as I mentioned earlier, you will just have front-wheel drive. However, for this car here, it doesn't make such a difference if you go all-wheel drive or not. Yeah, here if you have a lot of power, then you can bring more power to the ground with that. But for most use cases, the front-wheel drive will also be enough. If you think about using it for some off-road purposes, by the way, the approaching and descending angle of the normal GB version, not the AMG, is 18 degrees, if that's relevant for you but of course not set out to be the most off-road focused vehicle. And if you think about off-roading, by the way, the Formatics or all the all-wheel drive models, they come with an interesting function that the turning lights can be activated below a speed of 50 kilometers an hour, both, you know, both at the same time, left and right, to serve as night off-road light to have even more illumination when driving dark off-road areas. I think also an interesting idea.
khaki, slim and light, to get the badge, and we also get it in a black design. Otherwise it would be a little bit brighter. Door closing sound. Pretty solid, that's interesting. Nice, and also good build quality. So we got the leather red, high class leather red at the inside of the doors. And also at the top part, all soft touch here with the carbon fiber decor. There are different decors available. And then you got those cylindric aluminum brush design here at the inside of the doors. You will all see at the co driver side. And upright doors with huge door pockets. That's very cool. Then you have in this case the AMG entry badge in the lower part, also AMG floor mats. Then the top part here is also soft touch material, so good build quality. You have an AMG steering wheel, so it comes with a flat bottom. And those special gauges right here for suspension settings and for the driving modes. We'll also show them to you once more. Left side for the cruise control and for the left thumb to control the instruments, right thumb then to control the central infotainment system, one way to control it, on the right side also for the volume for example. Then those seats here are the optional animal skin seats, but the GLB offers a wide variety of animal friendly and sustainable seating materials. One example are for example the black and white mixed seats, those are from High Class Artico Leather Red, Artico or MB Techs are their brand names for that showing you that here and this one is even available not only heated but also cooled so a combination of le leatherette and cooled seats quite rare on the market only Mercedes and Tesla offer that at the moment so far as I know so different stylings available you can for example get a full Artico seat uh, with full leatherette in different colors you can at least in European markets get fabric full fabric seats or also a mix of fabric on the inside and then the leather red on the outside in different colors even and standard for the AMG here would be Dynamica microfiber on the inside and leather red on the outside. This is also a recommended option also a very sporty and visually attractive one. Yeah it's a little bit strange that this car has one of the biggest assets in offering so many different sustainable seating choices but then for the driving event they go like for the only one or two options which are not. Yeah, <laughs> well, the problem is um, that they try to tick all options for those test vehicles. And the reason for that is, for example, there's no panoramic roof here at the moment. There is one available. But the problem is that when reviewers do not explain that, then a lot of viewers say, oh, so this very vehicle does not have a panoramic roof. So this car does not at all have a panoramic roof, you know. And that's the reason why they spec the test vehicles with everything they have that no one thinks something is missing. And that's also then, you know, why some, uh, you know, extra optional seating choices appear in this car. So, yeah, that's a little bit background on those decisions. Now to the seating position. Upright, already a true SUV feeling. The GLA does not have an SUV feeling. It's more a crossover feeling. It's not good or bad, depending on what you prefer. Me personally, I prefer the upright SUV seating position. That's all quite cool here. The GLC does feel bigger somehow, yes. This one here, this platform sits a little bit lower. But again, you know, it's already quite comfortable. You can go on a long-term journey also, so that's actually quite good. And, you know, the space you have available is also quite nice. And it's also more comfortable than, for example, a Mercedes A-Class. The GLB can rather be compared to a B-Class. If you think about, you know... A little bit longer and so on rather like a like a b-class suv that's where it comes closest to steering wheel can be adjusted up and down and also in and out and it's very nice and smooth process and the seats either start with manual control you can also put this area in the lower area, lower part here a little bit longer you also have electric controls than it is here at the inside of the doors now the interior overview, you can see very interesting design elements like those turbine style vents, also with illumination in the middle part. Then this cylinder style, this is an iconic design element, especially for the GLB and also with those carbon fiber inserts. Then it would start with 7 inch screens on both sides. And then optionally you can go 7 inch left and this one 10.25 inch right and this one is the biggest set up 10.25 inch dual screen then you also have this going through design that's also what we have here today 
Again, the steering wheel, it's actually quite large for the rest of the interior, I think, just visually. And um, here are those you know, lower elements to control the flash up then when you start the car, like here, comfort, sport mode, sport plus mode, and so on. And on the left side, then you can, for example, change the suspension settings. But you can also still use the middle um, control unit here for the driving modes and also this touchpad, for example, to control the infotainment system. So you actually have redundant controls for all of the stuff. Again, as I mentioned earlier, left side here for this screen, right side for this screen, this screen also via touch, or this screen also with the lower console here to the infotainment system up close. Wow! What a cool front view camera, great landscape here and also great quality. And when I start up the engine, I can also easier set in the reverse camera. Here we go, also with a nice resolution helping um, lines and also this drone view from above. Also different perspectives are available. Also here, not to damage your rims. So pretty sophisticated system. And then what else, especially for the AMG, you have those performance gauges. Then you can also rev up. Whoa, <laughs> we don't want to drive. You can rev up that engine right here. Rum, rum, rum. So go to the P mode again and we shut down the engine. So, and then you can control this one here like this, but also, of course, with your right thumb, as I've shown you, and also with the lower pad. Comfort here, this is interesting, those uh, seat kinetics. If you activate them, then the normal seat controls for you know adjusting the seat are activate just a little bit from time to time to change your driving position that is better than on a long run ambient lighting you can set different colors that's also pretty cool effect and going back to the main menu what else is interesting phone connection either we are bluetooth but it's also possible to have your phone connection via apple carplay i soon show you that First of all, those settings right here. You can also change the settings for your displays and so on, or also get um, you know, the voice activation. You can activate or deactivate it. And talking about that, hey Mercedes, How may I help you? drive me to Barcelona. So that would be possible as a GPS boom. Yeah, yeah. For example, and then you know I can just start that one. I can also set the temperature or I can say activate head-up display. That is also a nice function. Then the head-up display is activated and so on. Other than that, you can also just control the voice activation at the steering wheel if you don't want to say this code word. And the GPS actually looks like this. So here we go. And it's actually easy to control, it has a good view and also is quite responsive. So when CarPlay is connected, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay connection via cable, then here we go, this is the integration and the optional Burmese sound system is actually quite nice. Gives a good surround sound for such a compact size vehicle. I would recommend it. So music, one of the things I found most important when driving a car, you know, at least to me. <laughs> but in this AMG version, of course, you also have some exhaust music if you like and that's the way you go back to the Mercedes system. Then those digital instruments here in this special AMG shape in the 35 version but you can also have um, different stuff in there you can go to different stylings and this one would be also then how it looks like in a normal GB if you have for example this classic layout that is available always takes the time to adjust a little bit or um, a normal sport layout, that one is also available. So depending on, on what you like. And then you can actually adjust all three areas want to have, or what you want to have in there. Uh, yeah, probably not all, <laughs> all the way the G-Force and so on. Um, or also a GPS view, so you're absolutely flexible with what you want to display. And the head-up display is a good option. The current speed, allowed speed pro possibly, you can also set what you want to see there. And also GPS directions. I've seen better ones also that are more crisp in the visualization. They're not flickering, by the way. That's maybe just on camera. But again, there are some that are a little bit clearer and also a little bit bigger. So it's nice to have it, but not the best head-up display I've seen. Then the lower middle console here, beautiful ambient light. You can slide this one open for cup holders. They can also be somewhat adaptive. Um, 
and then inductive charging pin in the front. But this one, there would be the USB charger for the CarPlay connection. Then you would have it with the cable connection anyway. Then this touchpad here again, volume control on the right, hotkey for the GPS, for example. Then this is just to rest your hand. And finally, this armrest, slide it open. Two more USB-C uh, chargers, but they are just for charging, not for connection. And the cubby hole inside. Now the rear doors, same design in the rear as for those seats and you can see you have a lot of adjustments for example this strap right here will flip the seat already from here like this pretty easy and then there's also this two-third part of the seat and when you put it upright again then you can already see you have to adjust the angle once again so this is the first and then the second would be like this you know and then you have you know a different angle of seating area and it's also interesting, you can see those rails there in the lower part. You can vary this seat bench 14 centimeters forward or backward, that's five and a half inches, to make it even more flexible. And now comes the big advantage of this vehicle because it has the same length than the GLC, as I said earlier, but you have more space on the interior. And here, as I would be driving as a tall person, still have a lot of space in front of my knees so that's very good because you also have an upright seating position here in the rear and it's actually quite comfortable it is especially recommended for kids because the upper you know the the, the seat bench here is really up upright you know and high actually so so sometimes when you have like those cars and the kids feel lost in the rear you know because like this like hello where am i but here they sit actually quite high and, but it's still also comfortable for adults and also headroom wise, it's no problem. One meters 86 or six foot one, just to remember my height. So, comfortable, very well used to space. Yeah, comparable again to a Mercedes B class. And you can have this sleeping position or a more upright seating position, depending on what you prefer. Talking about kits, isofix at the outside of the seats here each. You know, to install those child seats and since the doors open also reasonably it's easy to install them then this middle armrest right here with some cup holders there we go and by the way about you know moving the bench it's actually quite easy um, do it now here on this side you can also do it from here like this and all the way forward of course then it doesn't fit for you but the trunk will be longer, I'll soon show that to you, so that it depends on how you want to play with it. And last but not least, in the middle seat here, there is some middle tunnel because it's also option available with all-wheel drive. And of course, this very version does have it. You can still sit in the middle part, also headroom-wise, it's a little bit stiffer in the middle part, but you can even drive this car with five adults. This one here, the five-seater version. And then here in the lower middle part, you have two more USB-C devices right there in the lower part. So there is also the seven seater option available for this car. Then you could flip this bench forward, have an access to the rear, and you can actually also drive it with seven adults for at least you know a shorter period of time. And also the six and the seven seat do have isofix. If you're more interested in the seven seater version as well, there is also a static review available of the GLB with some other colors and different trims where we went in-depth on the seven-seater version of this car. And we also have a static AMG 35 review from the Motor Show where we also showed the seven-seater version for you. Those videos are linked in the video description and in the comment. Let's now open the hatch. 560 to 1755 is a liter figure. But what does it mean? Electric hatch available. Then you have this cover. And because it's also a possible seven-seater, it doesn't have rails on the side for the cover, but it's like rather wobbling around here and sometimes it can get a little bit close as for the height when you have a backpack in there you have to be aware of that other than that it's also like very strong from this you know holding back process then there's an additional cover you don't have to use it you can also just go with with normal ground here and underneath some more storage space and there we go actually quite square dimensions and again it's not actually too high and can also give you the measures for that because the normal height here under the cover 
is just about 40 centimeters and the total height you can of course also remove the car cover 75 centimeters and the width is about a meter and the normal trunk length is about 90 centimeters and if you move 14 centimeters or five and a half inches forward this rear bench then is of course is a little bit longer than a meter so here you can see the difference what it makes in the trunk because I have put the two-third a little bit more forward and the one-third like this and now we can also flip the seats here we go that's quite easy have to do it from the side and I'll also put some luggage piece inside you can see you now how it is from dimension and for the other side then you have to put the bench backward first because otherwise it wouldn't flip due to the front seats here we go and then we have the maximum setup I mean if I would still be driving as a rather tall person and then measure the length right there we get to that's quite significant 1 meters 75 that's actually quite a good result and the last thing I want to show you is we put a backpack in the trunk upright I'll show you what I mean with the cover so it does of course fit but then with the cover here it yeah it gets very close and then you're starting to whoa what, what do you do you know and then you have used two hands to fit this cover over it so with the cover upright normal size backpacks is a problem but of course you can always leave out the cover totally or just leave it open like this and now, what about the child safety test? Well, it's a little bit heavier than we used to from Mercedes, but still okay that it doesn't squish anyone majorly. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the GLB AMG version, the GLB 35. Let's start with the launch control in the Sport Plus mode and let's go. Wow, that was almost to 90 kilometers an hour. Whoa, that really hammered in. So, and this eight-speed DCD is really hammering in the gears when you are in this Sport Plus mode. So great acceleration. This all-wheel drive is, I mean, it's a front-wheel driven platform, but then on demand also torque on the rear wheels. Maximum 50-50 distribution, but it's always changing how much is being sent to the rear wheels especially here in the AMG version, they found the sport they set up for that. Also, the steering is stiffer in general. And if we start from the comfort mode here, there the steering is a little bit softer, but already stiffer than in the standard GLB. Um, yeah, sometimes maybe it's a little bit too loose in the Mercedes cars and you have to steer quite a lot. That's also diff uh, different to let's say Volkswagen Group vehicles for example where they have a little bit more progressive steering especially in the sports versions BMW is somewhere in between that um, but here you always have to steer quite a lot still you can't say that one or thing is good or bad it's also a matter of preference I prefer to steer a little bit less however the steering gives you good feeling so there's no dead zone or something you still you know can control very well and here even the small commands are being transported to the, to the road. And if you are then, for example, in the sport mode, steering is a little bit stiffer, the suspension is also stiffer if you have the adaptive suspension, which we have here today. So you start with the standard one, which is already stiffer, and then optional, the adaptive suspension also for the AMG model, that's the same, but that one is also stiffer in all the modes. And as long as the road here is very well paved, you don't have any problem with comfort. However, if there are some bumps in the road, then you do notice a difference and also a loss in comfort. You have to be aware of that, definitely. So, and then there's also Sport Plus where the gears are turned up higher even more. And you also hear more of the exhaust, definitely. At any time, you can also use the shifting pedals here to shift down and give it a little bit more RPMs. And that's a lot of fun. So. Oh, there's a cool pride taker and also then due to this stiffer suspension setup you see here there's no body roll from the car whatsoever so great slalom characteristics right here this is pretty cool so really stays very stable on the road and this one here is the a-class long platform and that means we have a little bit longer wheelbase than for example with the let's say a-class 35 which we 
also compared. Yeah, it feels a little bit less sporty, and this is also the SUV building style. But then again, considering it's a longer wheelbase, it's still very, very agile to drive. So cannot complain about that at all. This is very good handling in the corners, a very neutral um, feeling, I would say. That means that you can control the car very well. You don't have to learn the car first and it's very forgiving. So also for not that experienced drivers, they'll get along very well. And it's just a lot of fun, definitely. So yes, I have to say it works that you can get this family SUV in a sporty way and it offers driving fun. And this new compact class platform by Mercedes is handling that very well. We've already seen it with the Mercedes B-Class where we concluded also that a standard Mercedes B-Class also offers actually a lot of driving fun already. And that can speak for this compact um, size. Also, if you compare this one here to the sporty models of the GLC, the GLC of course offers more power, more performance, but here, I mean, 5.2 seconds to 1 kilometers or 60 miles now is already very significant, so quite fast. And this one here, of course, way lighter than the bigger GLC. Well, it's not, it's not longer, but bigger in the sense of bigger engine. So, and this you know, lighter feeling is also something what you do experience right here. The speed limits in Spain here are pretty strict. That's also the reason why we don't exceed the speed limits here and police always checking. But we still have a wonderful route here ahead of us. Um, so I hope you also enjoy those you know, combined car and landscape impressions. And even though if we aren't at the highest speeds here, it's still a lot of fun to drive. Also quite you know, challenging corners here definitely. Here again, smooth steering reactions and a little bit better here definitely with the AMG setup. So yes, the AMG model does offer more driving fun. Yet again, you have to be aware that you lose comfort due to the suspension at rough roads. Then it's just a question what you really like and of course also how much money do you want to spend. What's good with the GLB in general, you have this upright windscreen, you have somewhat an off-road vehicle atmosphere, very good overview to all of the sides. So even without elaborated assistance systems, you can get along with this car very well. You know what's happening where at all the time. So that's a very good and cozy feeling also with the upright seating position. So it gives you a good overall and very well balanced impression. And this again counts for almost all the compact size vehicles. If you compare this one here to an A-Class, here of course the more upright seating position delivers you more comfort. That's very important and especially helps tall drivers or if you have some um, lower back problems, for example. So this is always, you know, a very good thing to me. And if you compare it to a GLC again, this one here feels lighter, feels a little bit smaller, although this, the length is pretty much the same. And of course, it's cheaper in price. You know, this one here, price-wise, between the GLA and the GLC. GLA is not such an SUV feeling, more rather a crossover, so I'm not the biggest fan of the GLA. To be honest, I really like what we have here. This one here already gives you this true SUV feeling, not like the GLA, this crossover only feeling, you know. 8,000 euros more than the GLA in the base price, and then 8,000 euros more is the GLC than this one, so this one price-wise exactly in between. And that's probably also what makes this car quite attractive. Um, at one point we had a rattling noise from the front hood in, in the city at the bump, but that was just once, or maybe it was like the area here before. But then again, here on this route here, so far also with some bumps in the road, there was nothing so far. Um, we'll also test the noise insulation on the motorway very soon, when we go a little bit faster, this might be a chance. And here, <laughs> yeah, this engine can really react at any time if you shift down. So there's no turbo lag whatsoever. The only thing you can experience as lag would be when you're in a very high gear and then use the kick down, the car just takes some time to shift down, you know, though, maybe two or three gears even. But if you do that yourself with the shifting pedals, which are very well to control and also give you a very decent feedback, then you can also do something against this perceived shifting lag, definitely. 
So, oh, some birds always have to pay attention. So most of the time you can also just drive it in the comfort mode. It's already sporty enough right there. And whenever you want, you can either use these uh, standard control modes or with the AMG modes here also at this uh, at the steering wheel where you have this sports mode button or then even the sports plus. The ESP is drawn back a little bit, the stability, stability control and you can have it a little bit more loose so to say and also more boost, more sound so you can enhance your fun driving experience by that. And the difference between the suspension settings is somewhat noticeable but it's not huge you know so we have some cars where the span between the comfort and the sport suspension setting is a little bit you know wider so to say but here it's not too big actually so now we can also accelerate out of the corner from the standstill from the stop sign and see how that one plays out um, also with the overdrive distribution how that one you know behaves so let's see That was already 75 kilometers. So again, good performance, nice exhaust sound. So yeah, that sounded quite decent. And you maybe also saw that at the steering wheel, this was again very balanced. So there was no understeering, no oversteering. It didn't feel too aggressive. So it's not one of those very aggressive AMG mode. That's though it's definitely is not. Wow, you know, those white villages here in Southern Spain, very famous, um, beautiful view. Yeah, that's really awesome. I always like, you know, to combine interesting cars with a nice drive here together with the beautiful landscape. That's, I think, also very cool and entertaining to you guys. So again, this all-wheel drive distribution, you felt that it was a very equal distribution now. So when I really hammer it, up to 50% go to the rear wheels. And that again delivers you this very neutral, balanced feeling. So if you want the most aggressive AMG, that's surely not the one to go for. If you want a family suitable AMG version, yeah, that's probably then the one to go for. Um, so that might be one of the main arguments for that. If you think, ah, you always want to have an AMG, but yeah, you still need something for the family or maybe for your hobby, if you want to transport something in the back, something more practical just, and even more comfortable than an A-Class AMG, for example, then that might be your, um, your right compromise. Yeah, that's also entertaining. Two-stroke power for the win, right? <laughs> Sniffing some two-stroke. You know, know that from the motocross track, of course. Yeah, and of course, yeah, my main argument sometimes, you know, I will really need to have the AMG version because, you know, safety, you know, safer overtaking when it's a little bit faster. Just giving you some arguments, no? But of course, if we really think about a reasonable choice, that would be rather a... Uh, say GLB 250 in an AMG line, then you have a more reasonable price, already have the sporty styling. Of course, you don't need the abundance of power you have here, but if you need something and if it's reasonable, it was never something to consider when buying an AMG car. So, yeah. But of course, you know, um, as I said, I always wanted to give you a lot of insight in different versions of each car, even if we just have, you know, one or two engine versions on location. And of course, there are always things you can say general about the car and then something specific to the engine. So generally to the GLB, a good neutral balanced driving feeling, as we know also from the other um, compact class platform cars at Mercedes. Um, it feels agile, although it delivers you a lot of, let's say, family power or versatility. Um, steering feel could be a little bit more progressive, but still, you know, nice that we don't have any dead angles or something. Um, gives you a good feeling. Head-up display, by the way, um, this is also quite helpful. Um, could be a little bit crisper, I think, from, you know, just the, the, the visual stuff. So um, prefer those of BMW at the moment. And the other ones in the big Mercedes cars are also a little bit different. So this one here is special for the compact size cars. And good thing also, it's not too wide, this car. So here in the city, you also get along very well. And this overview, I mean, this is fantastic. This still has this, you know, off-road shape from the exterior. And this really also helps you on the interior. It just makes, oh, there's a nice entering to the town there as well. 
it just makes life so easy, especially in the city, to have this great overview. And that's, for example, different with the GLC, which is a little bit more design focused, longer hood and so on. So this one very well to maneuver overall. This is really helpful and even better than the A-Class, you know, although the A-Class is smaller, this one here feels easier to control than the A-Class because of this upright building form and the higher driving position. And that counts for all the GLB models. And then specifically for the AMG, the 35, yes, of course, it turns up the sportiness. Could expect that. Stiffer suspension, that's the main thing to me. So you have to take the decision, do you want that stiffer suspension, yes or not? even in the adaptive one. And then of course, the more and power you have all the time together with this all-wheel drive on, on demand. But if you are at the decision, take this one with all-wheel drive or not in general, even with smaller engine models, I think it's not the main thing with this vehicle. So if you go for, um, interesting, I should go down here. And now this overview plays an effect. It's almost feel like an off-road situation and that's actually quite cool, you know, again, great overview, easy to handle this situation and augmented reality here in this GPS also helps me to take, you know, exactly the right street I need to go in. So those are our impressions here from a little bit acceleration, dynamic driving and city. Let's now head on to the motorway. So now to some motorway driving, everyday driving life on the motorway for you. It's about 9 liters on 100 kilometers, so that's about 26 mbg or 31 mbg UK. That's the, the best fuel economy you'll probably get. And if you drive it a little bit more AMG like, more like 10 liters plus on 100 kilometers or then of course less mbg, so something 20 plus mbg. As for the motorway features here, of course, with the AMG, you do lose comfort. Even if you have the adaptive suspension, it is definitely way stiffer, no doubt about that. And also in the comfort mode. And we also have to think about, we have the 21 inch wheels mounted. This is stiffer suspension and the big wheels, they give you better contact to the road for sporty driving, but definitely you do lose comfort. So if you seek more comfort, still want to go with the AMG then maybe just stick to the 19 inch wheels. This will already improve your comfort significantly. And if you want even more comfort, then don't go for the AMG version, but rather a GLB 250 than with the adaptive suspension and so on. So it depends on what you like. When we switch to driving modes here, for example, to sport, I also get a little bit more response. Um, doesn't make too much sense for the motorway. Maybe if you want to do an acceleration and want to have a little bit more power, you know, that could be something maybe um, but then again you can always use the shifting pedals so you know let's just imagine I want to accelerate or do overtake a maneuver um, then I just shift down once or twice and then I'm also at more rpms and it will also help even if I'm just in the comfort mode here with the blind spot monitor good assistance systems one of the most important ones you can get the red triangle is flashing when the car is about to overtake us or we in advance, that's really very helpful. And we also have the adaptive cruise control, the Distronic, set it here in the steering wheel, left side of the steering wheel, and then also the distance to the car in front of me is being kept. So that's pretty helpful. And there's also this highway assist, so we can theoretically take your hand, my, my hands off and the car will still hold the lane. You know, I will show it now, it's like a short, right turn here, it's holding it, but it's already complaining, please keep your hands on the steering wheel, so do, don't do this at home, it was just for demonstration purposes, and I was um, intending to be you know, react, reacting all the time. So it's not meant to take your hands off, the car doesn't allow that, so it would cancel everything and ultimately come to a stop even if you, you know, at some point doesn't do, don't do anything. But basically works very well. The only thing I don't like with the Mercedes that much is that the run of road protection is not um, so you, like not this active from the from the cruise control. That's fine, but if you you know steer against the side, um, quite often it, it happens. Um, now it doesn't do it, but quite often it happens that, that there's a braking intervention instead of a steering intervention, and that's sometimes um, let's say a little bit shocking. So you, you don't really. Um, 
feel it would be a, a smooth transition. transition. Um, maybe I can induce it um, also at a, at a later stage or something. So, but the general feeling here, due to the upright seating position, is quite nice and comfortable. That's good. Noise insulation, um, not too happy with that actually. So, there is quite rough tarmac here. Yes, of course. So, it's really always hard to compare those cars, with the different cars we drive. You can just one to one to compare them if you always use same weather or wind conditions, same tarmac, same tires, even same wheel size, and so on. That that's actually no way possible. But I can say from my subjective feeling, you know, that the noise insulation is not the best we've um, heard from Mercedes. And okay, it's an SUV building style, so it sends more against the wind. And it's also one of the compact size vehicles where they don't spend too much money in the sound insulation so maybe it's that I don't know but definitely not the best not top-notch as for that and the CLA for example which has you know so many same parts as this car here well, this is nice an old Defender um, so the CLA was really really silent on the interior however the CLA has also building form wise you know it really it's like like a like a raindrop you know so fluent and that can definitely help so here with the AMG power when you're going up in the motorway there's no problem you also hear that the engine is quite silent when you just keep it at low rpms so from the engine not you know no significant sound and but anytime you want it or if you go for sports mode and just 100 to 120 and it's and it's there in no time and so you're not lacking any power from this four cylinder engine and if you're on the sport mode also the exhaust node will turn up also have this blob from the DCT eight speed dual clutch transmission if you keep it at low rpms there are hardly any transitions you feel very smooth everything and in the sports mode then then the shifting process really hammers in and you also hear something of that very stable also at higher speeds when you do some lane change, so um, very sophisticated feeling. You do feel that the steering is heavier also on those everyday motorway driving runs, but since you don't steer that much on the motorway, it doesn't play such an effect than if you would you know, just be cornering all the time. So, concluding for the motorway driving is, it's comfortable as for the seating position, that's good. You can also adjust them. You know while driving like this here and noise insulation should be better actually for Mercedes yes power definitely abundance is there oh, that's another old defender interesting should be some meeting here or something and yeah what else assistance systems work very flawlessly that's actually also quite cool suspension wise you have to know there is a compromise between, you know, sportiness and comfort, but here in this AMG 35, the compromise is rather set to the sporty side, and yeah, also you do lose comfort here on the motorway rides, have to be aware of that. Still, however, it's not that you would feel, oh, you know, I can't drive this vehicle in everyday driving life, it's too stiff, still somewhat okay, but if you want the AMG version, that's what you get, and probably that's also what you want. And now to our today's conclusion with the all-new Mercedes GLB. So it's a very interesting car because, again, same length as a Mercedes GLC, but on the compact class platform, on the longer compact class platform by Mercedes, so you have more space on the interior if you compare it to a GLC. And if you compare it to a GLA, you already have this true SUV feeling. Then a nice build quality on the interior, abundance of choice of sustainable animal-free materials on the seats, even though we didn't have the main car of that on the location here today, but they really offer a variety of really high class choices. Yeah, probably one of the best as for this aspect on the market at the moment. Exterior wise, it is very strong off roadish, especially in the front. The AMG then adds this sportier styling, definitely also with different spoilers and so on. From the side and from the rear, I think we can argue if that's the most beautiful SUV, but that's also a matter of preference. 
But the interior design, definitely very central, but we already know that, for example, from the A-Class and the B-Class, I think that's um, really well done. And also the seven-seater option, also very, um, very important to mention that. Driving-wise, very balanced, a neutral feeling, very forgiving, easy to handle, easy co to control. And of course, the 35 AMG adds this even sportier feeling to the car, it makes it stiffer. You have to decide if you want it that stiff from suspension, no matter if you go for the base or even the adaptive suspension. You should not go for the base stiff AMG suspension unless you really want it rough on the road. But if you pick such a car, probably you don't want to have that. So definitely the, uh, the adaptive suspension for the AMG, pick that option. If you go for a base GLB, I think you can also live for, with the base suspension if you want to save some money. The adaptive suspension will, of course, offer you a little bit more comfort and also more adaptiveness if at some point you want to go you know, a little bit stiffer after suspension and uh, at some point you want to go a little bit softer. Uh, but you always have to check the option list if you think about, you know, this car, and as I said earlier, 8,000 euros more than a GLA, 8,000 euros cheaper than a GLC, but if you spec it, it will be even cheaper than a GLC. And I mean, for a well spec one, 40 something K definitely, like 45,000 euros, that is maybe realistic. But you can also top it up even more and with the AMG version rather than 60K something. So it's not a cheap car, but considering it's a Mercedes, it's not as expensive as other ones. So within the Mercedes portfolio, together with the GLB, probably one of the best price performance ratios there is. And in the AMG, yes, it works to have a family SUV also as the AMG, combining driving fun and the versatility that does work. So you could say, why not, definitely. Again, it, uh, it's a question of the price you want to pay and also the emphasis of sportiness versus comfort you want to go for. What's your take on the all-new GLB? And of course, of course, also to this combination, GLB plus AMG. would like to hear your comments on that right now. Join us in the section and also tune in next time. Also to other, the static GLB review. If you want to see more trim and color and so on, we will link that episode. And also the other Mercedes SUVs, GLA, GLC, or some of the competitors. We will always link some interesting videos in the video description and also in the comment section. So see you there.